So obviously that's a quite a big chunk, but that's two fifths. Yeah, one day it's sunshine, and I've bloody lost my glasses already. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, just fucking interrupt. Prick. Any rod. <laughs> Scrub that. My name is Matt, welcome back to the workshop and today we are looking at diesels and diesel emissions. So there's been a thing in the paper recently, a month ago or something like that, about diesels will probably be banned from most capital cities to start with in Europe and will probably spread everywhere. And this video is about the facts and figures and so on and are diesels killing everyone? You know, is it as simple as that? Die is in the name, so you know what is the problem with diesels and my spin on this or my angle on this is that I think it's a ridiculous idea and I will tell you why. So a lot of the articles and so on state that 467,000 people were killed by pollution in 2015 I think it is and 71,000 of them in the UK, where I live, and this kind of uh, didn't sit right with me because it is a very difficult thing to state how many people die from exactly what. So, um, you know, 46, four, uh, 467,000 people in Europe is a hell of a lot of people, but then saying that Europe has a hell of a lot of people in it. And it did state that these were premature deaths from air pollution. And then they jumped straight to diesel. Bastards. Diesels. Um, so I'm going to have to cheat here because there's a lot of information to get through and I don't want to get it wrong. So one of the things they were banging on about was what they called PM 2.5. Which is partic particulate matter or particles of stuff, materials, not matter, materials. Um, 2.5, so the 2.5 is 2.5 microns, uh, basically just the size. So this is about, oh god, what it would be, 30 times the thickness of your hair, little tiny particles. So I did actually look at the study, it was the culinary study on air pollution and effects on the body. I'll put some pictures up and some data up on the screen now so you can see. I read through pretty much about 80% of this study and I do have some qualms and some problems with it because... The mass media have jumped onto it, and I'm not one of these guys who say, oh, the mass media are lying to us. Yeah, they lie to us, but everyone lies to everybody. Um, you know, that's nothing new. Uh, it was this, this number that I found, this 467,000 people died prematurely, which is, as the study states itself, is a very hard thing to say. How do you know that someone died prematurely if a lot of these people die from natural causes? When they do the autopsies, they find shit in the lungs and what have you. And um, the study did say that uh, Poland, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, these kind of countries are the highest polluted countries in Europe. And it kind of goes without saying because they have a lot of coal fire plants, a lot of their electricity production is with coal and stuff like that. So the highest, you know, some of the highest numbers of shitty air come from these countries which are a lot of Eastern Bloc countries, you know, they recently joined the EU and these are, uh, for lack of a better word, these are still developing countries a lot of the time, you know, their infrastructure isn't as good and so on and so forth. The other thing is as well as they're not buying the new cars that have better emissions control and what have you. Well, we'll go into that in a minute. But what I did get from the study that pointed out this 467,000 was the fact of the other things that come into this PM point, uh, 2.5. So this is after doing autopsies on people and looking at um, cellular damage of these people that have died supposedly prematurely. I'm not saying that, you know, air pollution doesn't kill people. Of course it does. But if you look at the list of things um, that account for particulates in the air that can be associated with premature death, and most of these people aren't dying at 20, they're dying in their 80s or 75 or what have you. Um, we've got tobacco, obviously, wood-burning stoves, they're an issue, cleaning products, air fresheners, mould spores, mildew, and solvents and plastics. So plastics, if you've got a plastic, whatever, your TV set, something like that, generally when it gets warm especially, um, these solvents vent stuff out. 
when I used to do electron microscope um, work for Carl Zeiss, one of the big problems with putting plastics inside an electron microscope is that they vent out all their solvents um, into the chambers and stuff, so everything was either unpainted, it was steel, stainless steel, stuff like that, because you couldn't put um, plastics into these uh, chambers because they wouldn't vent down properly. Any road. So that's just looking at what they found in people's lungs. Basically, bloody everything, pollen, you name it, anything that's in the air that we breathe in, dust and all that kind of crap. They did find, you know, um, uh, nitrogen dioxide and stuff, and that's where this whole, you know, death to diesels thing has come from. So the next thing I want to look at, um, or in a sense highlight the issues with, is the whole thing to do with diesels in general. So because this is generally a motorbike show, um, I want to point out, we, we need to look at how many vehicles are, um, in, and we're going to use the UK as an example, but how many vehicles are registered in the UK. So motorbikes is 3.8%, that's really crap in it. Uh, vans is 9.6%. Uh, what have we got? We've got 1.3% HGVs, 0.5% uh, buses, that's when you can never bloody get one, and the, remain, the, the, the remaining 83% is cars. So if we're looking at air pollution um, from vehicles full stop, us bikes are saving the world, vans, meh. HGVs, weirdly enough, you know, most of these vehicles, so buses, HGVs and vans are the main diesel engines that we think about before we start adding cars into the fact. So basically 20% or less than 20% are these are the uh, diesels, the heavy diesel engines, the big diesel engines. Right, so out of our 83, 80% cars, there's 26 million registered cars in the UK, 10 million of them are diesels, so that's um, no, it's not three, is it? You tip. That's two fifths of diesels. So it's actually quite a big proportion, you know. We're nearly up to half. Um, we're up to half the number of uh, cars in the UK are diesel. So obviously, this isn't looking good. It does look like um, diesels, you know, are quite prevalent. You know, if we had half a million diesels, then I'd think that this banning diesels from engine uh, banning diesel engine vehicles from cities would be a bit you know a bit stupid the next thing i looked at then was the euro 6 so this is the euro um, uh, emissions control the limits that they put on car manufacturers to if they can sell them they have to pass this euro 6 um, legislation and blah 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 so if we actually look at the euro 6 numbers what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out what they measure. So they measure everything in grams per kilometre uh, through the emissions. So they stick a collector on the back of it and what have you. And then they have, um, what do they have here? They have uh, nitrogen oxides, oxides of nitrogen, so NOx. Uh, they have particulate matter, the, uh, like I said, the actual bits. They have carbon monoxide and they have uh, hydrocarbons so basically fuel that's actually pissing out your exhaust so first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the diesels so this is 0 0.08 so that's 0 0.08 grams per kilometre that they travel uh, what we've got particulate matter is 0 0.005 which is bugger all uh, carbon monoxide is 0 0.5 and the NOx and hydrocarbons is 1.70. So they're quite small numbers, that's the new standard that car manufacturers have to pass. And obviously if you've got 10 million diesels in the UK, then these numbers, you know, your times them by 10 million, and they become quite big per every kilometre that's travelled. But then this is my kind of issue with all this, is if we look at the um, petrol, I always thought, you know, the way they're yapping on, there'd be a massive difference. But the petrol ones, and I'll put petrol there, or gasoline if you're from the States, is 0 
for the nitrous oxides, which would include um, nitrogen dioxide, which is the thing that's killing everyone, supposedly. Um, 0 0.05 for the particulate matter, which is one of the other things they were banging on about in that study where they were looking at people's tissues and stuff in the lungs. 1.0 carbon monoxide, and they do not have a um, limit for hydrocarbons, which I don't know why. You don't seem like you're comparing eggs for eggs here. Um, and there's diesel. So if we actually look at this, there's not a massive difference. There is a difference between the nitrogen dioxides, or all the nitrogen compounds. Um, but I was quite surprised that the uh, carbon monoxide was a big difference. Um, because diesels do burn cleaner. Uh, diesels, diesels do burn cleaner when it's also in respect to carbon, carbon dioxide. I think I had that written down here, the numbers. 20% uh, lower. So obviously we've been going on about global warming and stuff and now carbon dioxide is the enemy. So diesels is 20% lower than carbon dioxide. They didn't give the numbers in the Euro 6 of carbon dioxide emissions. But there is a percentage difference here. You know, there's a 25% a difference with these two. But these are just the limits that they have to meet. And yes, there's been a bit of controversy recently about how these are tested and our manufacturers cheating on them to get certain diesels through and what have you. But we've got a um, 5 million difference in the UK between how many petrols there are to diesels. So if you, you know, if you do the numbers and all the rest of it and you add the amount of petrols that are on the road more than diesels, then 5 million, then these numbers are pretty much exactly the same. And this is kind of what was annoying to a certain degree, is that they're singling out diesels saying that they're bad and they're shit due to their reputation like they were well, since the 50s, you know, up until the early 90s and stuff, diesels did spew out smoke that you could see catalytic converters were just coming in for all vehicles and so on and so forth. But since then, manufacturers have worked very heavily on reducing emissions from diesels, um, the way they burn, you know, cleaner burning, stuff like that, exhaust gas recirculation, loads of different catalytic converters and filters and stuff. And they've done a real good job. You know, these numbers are a hell of a lot lower than they were just, say, in 2004. And the manufacturers have to stick to these. So, to simply just say that, you know, diesels are killing everyone, I would expect, after looking at this, that this would be something like this. If I saw a change like this, the difference between the two, then I'd go, holy shit, we need to cut diesels out. But the fact of the matter is is that the numbers really aren't that different. I was really quite surprised after looking into it and actually looking at the facts and figures um, that diesels really aren't contributing that much more than petrols. But not only that, there is an extra 5 million, you know, a fifth, 20% uh, more petrols out there than there are diesels. And it, to me, it just didn't make any sense. But then people argue, you know, well, there's lorries and buses and stuff that use diesels as well. But they make up less than 20% of the total vehicles on the road. It's, yeah, it just, it, so there, you know, these numbers are the 200, what was it, 467,000. 467,000 people have died from particulate matter or prematurely died, which is a very hard thing to say, you know. You've got to take everything into account of these people's lives. Did they smoke between the, t the age of 20 and 40? You know, stuff like that. It's very hard to say this is exactly what killed people, and prematurely as well. To do, you know, that kind of study is a very difficult study. And even the study itself says that all the things in the air, like air fresheners and deodorant and perfume and, you know, your TV venting out all the solvents that are in the plastics and so on and so forth. You know, the solvents... When you buy a new car and you get in, the smell, that new car smell, is actually the solvents of all the glues they use for the upholstery and all the plastics for the dash and all the rest of it. That's what you're smelling, is the solvents, and that's probably just as bad for you, if not worse, than the diesel engine is. It's not the fact that I'm saying that air pollution isn't a bad thing. Air pollution is a bad thing. Burning fuels 
and not treating them and filtering them and removing all the harmful chemicals is a bad thing. No, it's a brilliant thing. You know, you'd have to be stupid to think that smoking is not a bad thing. And your car, in a sense, is smoking. It's as simple as that. It's not detrimental to the car, but it's detrimental to us. I'm not saying that diesels and petrols are not bad for the environment. What I'm saying is, is that diesels and petrols, like for like, are pretty much the same. Um, and the, you know, there is an imbalance between the two, but the imbalance is then taken up by the amount of how many petrols there are per diesels. You know, they're not looking at the mileage that people do in these cars as well. The other thing is as well is that diesels um, usually generally get between 15 and 22% more efficiency. And efficiency, you know, is the cost of fuel. If you have to fill up less, then, you know, it's head to head there. So to knock diesels on the head or to say to manufacturers, you know, it's great that you've made diesels, you've dropped the emissions levels this low. It's great that you've made them more efficient and that they perform better and all the rest of it. But fuck you, we're getting rid of diesels. When, if you get rid of diesels, you're just going to then replace the diesels with the petrols. And the numbers really aren't that much different. So I kind of got a bit annoyed when I said that they were contributing all these deaths completely. Don't get me wrong, there are people who have died from particulates coming out of engines, but it's very hard to tell when they both produce pretty much the same kind of emissions. Uh, the particulates are different, but when they, you know, they, they, they keep on jumping on nitrogen dioxide, well they both produce nitrogen dioxide, uh, oxides of nitrogen, loads of different compounds. So how can you single out which is a diesel and which is a petrol? just to then, you know, headhunt diesels and then just start banning them. The other thing is, as well, is the countries that are signed up for this, or the two that are in the focus, were Paris and London. And Paris and London have the lowest air pollution compared to, like I say, Poland, Czech Republic, entire countries. So it just seems a bit silly to me to just single out diesel because it's bad reputation in the 70s, 80s and 90s. Uh, well, no, 70s and 80s, really. And then just headhunt after that, where... The, when you take into account the numbers of the actual uh, petrols that are on the road versus diesels, these emission levels will be the same. And I think it's stupid to negate fuel efficiency and all the work and money and research that's been spent on making diesels as good as they are today, just to chop that on the head and just say, ah, diesels are shit. You remember when you were a kid, yeah, pollution, horrible. Let's just get rid of diesels and replace them with the petrols until we invent electric cars. It just seems stupid and it just seems like a hype. Anyway, that's my take on that. I will put links below to the studies and what have you. You can read them yourself if you're really that interested. Um, but, you know, you just have to look into these studies and see what they're really saying instead of just people jumping on the bandwagon. Anyway, that's that video and I'll see you in a bit.